Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my kitchen for another episode from my amazing food series. My name is Derek from Cinnamon Nutrition and today we're going to be talking all about a very, very special vegetable. Possibly one of the most nutritious but underutilized vegetables in the whole grocery store. Today we're talking about bok choy. So just like with all these videos, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the history of bok choy. We're going to talk about some cool fun facts about it, the nutritional content of it, and of course how it benefits our body. And then I'll share with you guys some ways that you can use bok choy and I will of course share a recipe with you at the end. And like I always like to with these videos. So you may hear of bok choy being referred to by a few different names. It also goes by pak choy, pak choy, and also Chinese cabbage. And it has a long history of use in China dating back to over 1500 years ago, but it has only been cultivated in North America for the last hundred or so years. Most of the bok choy that we get here in North America comes from Mexico, but California is a large producer along with some other states like Arizona and Texas as well. Bok choy is part of the cruciferous family of vegetables and in that family there's over 4,000 species of plants and a lot of them aren't even edible. So we actually use the term brassica in botanical terms when talking about cruciferous vegetables and then cruciferous vegetables when talking about the foods that we eat. So it gets kind of confusing because they are sort of interchangeable but just understand that if you hear them they are pretty much the same thing. And you can actually see from this chart here the increase in recorded use of the word brassica around the 1970s when they they started to make that distinction. Another cool thing that I learned is that the word cruciferous comes from the word cross and that's because cruciferous vegetables have four petaled flowers that resemble the shape of a cross. So I knew that I had some kale outside that had bolted and gone to flower and I know that that is a cruciferous vegetable so I went outside to check it out and you can sure enough see that it has a four petaled flower. And the flowers from cruciferous vegetables are actually edible as well. They just kind of taste like the rest of the plant. They taste a little bit like broccoli. And broccoli is actually the bud of the flower before it flowers. So yeah, makes sense. Some other common cruciferous vegetables other than kale and bok choy are broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, arugula, Brussels sprouts, collard greens, watercress, and radishes. So of course these are all extremely healthy foods being rich in vitamins, minerals, fiber, and antioxidants, but cruciferous vegetables definitely have some attributes that make them unique. Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, and bok choy all contain sulforaphane. This is a really powerful antioxidant that helps our body to fight inflammation and deal with oxidative stress, and it does that through a few different pathways. It's been shown to fight cancer, reduce pain, and prevent memory loss. So this is clearly one serious antioxidant, and this review paper here confirms that. Sulforaphane is able to promote apoptosis in cancer cells by many mechanisms, the production of reactive oxygen species being one of the most relevant ones. Given its properties, sulforaphane could be considered as a phytochemical at the forefront of natural medicine. So that's pretty amazing. That is so much disease fighting protection just in these plants here. That's incredible. So let's have a look at the nutritional content. So as we look at chronometer here, we're going to be looking at two cups of cooked bok choy. And they've added salt to it in this case, and I don't know why, but it was the only option there for cooked bok choy. So if you see sodium pretty high in the mineral section, you will know why. But here, surprisingly enough, we can see that it's actually fairly high in protein. 33% of the calories coming from protein. So we aren't gonna be eating a whole ton of calories from bok choy, but it is interesting to note that it is so high in protein. In just 40 calories, there's five grams of protein. And interestingly enough, that's actually twice as high per calorie as black beans. <laughs> so I don't think you should go and replace your black beans with bok choy, but it's just interesting to know that there is protein in all these foods that we're eating. A good amount of B vitamins, especially B6 and folate, and it has a lot of vitamin A in the form of beta carotene. A lot and if you look at it, it's 500% our RDI of beta carotene so I know a lot of you guys are gonna worry about toxicity especially when the number is that high over our RDI but I actually found this article from the National Institute of Health that covers that topic because vitamin A is fat soluble the body stores excess amounts primarily in the liver and these levels can accumulate although excess preformed vitamin A can have significant toxicity known as hypervitaminosis A Large amount of beta carotene and other provitamin A carotenoids are not associated with major adverse effects. And then the article goes on to say, and even large supplemental doses of beta carotene or diets with high levels of carotenoid rich food for long periods are not associated with toxicity. The most significant effect of long term excess beta carotene is carotin, oh gosh, carotinodermia, a harmless condition in which the skin becomes yellow-orange. This condition can be reversed by discontinuing beta-carotene ingestion. 
So what this is saying is that the vitamin A that we get from plants in the form of beta carotene poses almost no threat for toxicity. However, the preformed vitamin A that you get from animal products does pose some threat to toxicity if ingested in large amounts. Plants for the win, again. <laughs> they actually did mention what happens if you consume massive amounts of beta carotene and they called it carotinodermia. And I've heard it called beta carotinosis or carotinosis. But what happens is your hands, the palms of your hands start to turn like an orangey yellow. And what's funny is this actually happened to me when I first went vegan, like almost a decade ago now. And uh, I'd been living away from home and I went home to live with my family for a little while and this is the first time I'd been living at home since I'd been vegan and of course my mom was like all worried about my health and everything. She didn't know much about it then. She's educated herself a lot since then, which I love you for mom. But my hands were actually starting to turn this like orangey yellow color because I was just hammering so many beta carotene rich foods and I guess my body like wasn't used to it at that point or whatever because I still eat just as many and the color of my hands is fine. But yeah, it was really funny. So she made me go to the doctor She's like, I want you to have a blood test. Like, look at your hands. You're turning into a carrot. So I went and I showed the doctor and uh, I went into the room and she's like, what are you here for? And I just like showed her my hands and they were orange. And she kind of laughed and she's like, let me guess, you're a vegetarian. And no, I, so I told her, I was like, no, I'm a vegan. And uh, she laughed. She said, yeah, that makes sense. And she told me what it was. She said, we'll get you some blood tests to put your mom at ease, but uh, it's nothing to worry about. So even she knew about that. She said she doesn't see it very often, but it does happen. Bok choy is also a really good source of vitamin C and in order to retain most of that you really want to either eat it raw or minimally cook it because we do know that heat destroys vitamin C. So I mean cooking it a little bit so that it wilts down so you can eat more makes sense but if you're just like cooking the crap out of it until it like turns brown and into nothing um, you're probably not going to have much vitamin C left. As we scroll down here and look at the mineral content of bok choy, you can see that it's a great source of calcium. In just these two cups of cooked bok choy, there's one third of your total RDI. So this is three times as much calcium per calorie as kale and even more than spinach. And unlike spinach, the calcium in bok choy is super absorbable since bok choy is extremely low in oxalates. Oxalates are mineral binding compounds that are found in some plant foods and they're often referred to as anti-nutrients. So I actually found this cool chart which shows the oxalate content of some common foods and you can see here that in one cup of bok choy there's only one milligram of oxalates. And when we scroll down here and compare that to spinach there's 656 milligrams of oxalates in the same amount of spinach. And as I scroll down further, you can see that they have a bunch of foods listed here. So I'll put a link to this in the description down below if you want to check it out because I do find it pretty interesting. It's also a really good source of iron as you can see here. Almost half of your RDI of iron in just these two cups of cooked bok choy. And we know that vitamin C helps with the absorption of iron. So having those two things in food together is a really good thing. Bok choy is clearly super nutritious, but like I said in the beginning, I swear it's underutilized. Like I rarely see people cooking with it and I hardly ever see it on Instagram. So hopefully after this video, things are going to change. And you know what? It's not even that bad raw. For all the weird tasting greens that I eat, it's definitely not one of the worst. It's not bad. So at the store, you obviously want to look for the freshest and crispiest bok choy that you can find. And there's a few different types of bok choy. Like this is the traditional massive big leaf bok choy. And then this is like baby bok choy. And then here we have uh, Shanghai bok choy, which has like a green stem rather than the white stem that these ones have. And they're all going to have a really similar nutrient content. However, the Shanghai bok choy with the green stem is definitely going to have more antioxidants in it. That's just the name of the game. So once you brought your bok choy home and you're ready to cook with it, you definitely want to make sure that you clean it really well because what happens is there's a lot of dirt and everything that gets stuck in the crevices. So what you want to do is you want to at least cut it in half or cut it into quarters and make sure that you clean it really well that way or just take all the leaves off individually and then you can also wash it like that. So there's clearly lots that you can do with bok choy. I mean, pretty much anything you can do with any other green, you can do with bok choy. But uh, something unique that I've seen, I have seen some restaurants where they just half it and then they will grill it like that. Uh, it's also a really nice texture to put in soups. I have a recipe on here somewhere for a high protein miso soup. And I think that chopped up bok choy would go really, really well in there. So I suppose you could put bok choy in smoothies, although I don't think I've ever done it. I might start because it's pretty cheap. I think this was even like cheaper than kale. And as you guys saw, it's got all the nutrients there. So huh, why not? I'm going to try it. 
But the most common way that I use it is to just chop it up and put it into stir fries. It's the easiest way to do it and for me the most delicious because usually I'm adding some amazing sauce to the top of that stir fry which is what I'm going to be showing you guys here today. I'm going to show you how to make a really simple tofu and bok choy stir fry with a peanut and ginger sauce. All right, so to start, you're gonna wanna chop up some onion. Probably a quarter of an onion or a half a cup or so will work. And then you're also gonna wanna chop up a half a block of tofu. And then you wanna get those into a preheated frying pan with a little bit of water or vegetable broth as I'm using here. And then just mix that around. And next, you're gonna wanna make sure that your bok choy is cleaned really, really well. And then after that, you're just gonna chop it up. And then you're gonna add that to the frying pan along with the onions and tofu and then we're gonna quickly make the sauce. So what I like to do is put the stems in first because they take a little bit longer to cook. So I'll put the lid on that, cook that for a few minutes and then once that's almost ready I'll add the leaves. Alright, so here's everything that you're gonna need to make the sauce for this and you can see it's really simple, not too many ingredients. So we've got one big tablespoon of peanut butter, I think you can probably go with a heaping tablespoon there, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, three teaspoons of tamari. If you have Bragg's soy seasoning or soy sauce, something like that'll work as well. And then we've got one medjool date, we've got a chunk of ginger, a couple cloves of garlic, and then one tablespoon of ground flax. And then I'm gonna blend all that up with a couple tablespoons of vegetable broth. So you could use water if you don't have vegetable broth, but I do find it adds a nice flavor to it. So I'm using the Magic Bullet instead of the Vitamix for this one because I find that this is great for sauces of like less volume. The Vitamix is great, but you need quite a bit of volume in there to make everything go around. So this is just perfect. All right, so let's taste it first. It's always a good idea to try it before you dump it on top of a whole stir fry. Wow, holy, okay, so this one is absolutely incredible. So it is pretty thick. I think I'm probably gonna add one more tablespoon of vegetable broth to this, but man, this one is good. I can't wait for you guys to try it. All right, so now that's all that's left to do is add the rest of the bok choy and pour in the sauce, mix it up a little bit and serve it up. So I'm just gonna keep mixing this until all the bok choy is wilted down and then we're ready to go. I mean, of course you could eat it like this. There's nothing in here that necessarily needs to cook, but. I like mine a little bit more wilted down than this. I find I can eat more of it that way. So I'm just sprinkling on some seaweed flakes and as you guys know, cruciferous vegetables are considered goitrogenic foods. And that just means that it can have an effect on our thyroid leading to hypothyroidism if we are not cautious and uh, don't take in any iodine. So as long as you're getting some sort of iodized salt in your diet or you're taking in some sort of sea vegetables, you should be totally fine. All right, so there it is all finished. It's definitely not the prettiest stir fry I've ever made. I probably could add some more color to it, maybe some red pepper or something like that would have livened it up. But I bet it's gonna taste really good all the same. So let's try it out. Wow. Mm. All right, so I think that's probably it. Another awesome recipe, hopefully another awesome video for you guys. So if you do try this recipe, definitely tag me on Instagram, at Simnet Nutrition. I absolutely love seeing your creations. And hopefully with this video, I've inspired you to go out there and buy some bok choy and start incorporating it into your diet because yeah, it is just such a good green. And like I said, it is so underutilized. So let's bring up the bok choy. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I do appreciate it. And definitely hit the like button, if not for this video, for the awesome raccoon shirt. <laughs> definitely subscribe if you want to see more from me, and I'll see you guys very soon with another video. See ya. Wow, hot.